What's going on everyone? It's Marcellus back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Baby Doge because yes, we just now had a nice increase inside of Baby Doge, the crypto market and the stock market. So we're going to talk about why that happened and what we could possibly be seeing next with Baby Doge. So definitely stick around to the end of the video. Go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you like these Baby Doge videos. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you all want me to go over next. If you want to become a member of the channel, definitely go ahead and do that. I'll go over any crypto that the members want me to go over next as long as it's not no scam coin. And remember, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. If you don't have a Ledger Nano X or a hard hardware wallet, remember, if it's not your keys, it's not your crypto. You're definitely going to want to go get one of those. Link in the description if you want to go ahead and get that. Now, let's get started with Baby Doge. So I want to talk about some stuff with Baby Doge. So first of all, let's talk about why this happened. So before we even go over this technical analysis, let's talk about why this increase in Baby Doge happened. Why we went from 1130 in Baby Doge all the way up to 1265. Why Bitcoin went all the way from 20.7K all the way up here to 22.8K? Why all these other cryptos are up? Ethereum, 15% for the last 24 hours. Why Polygon is up 15%? Why over here, Ethereum Classic is up 32%. So we're going to talk about why all of this is happening. This is crazy right now. I know you see all of these charts. Everything is inside the green. So let's talk about this. So the biggest thing that's going on right now inside of the financial market, the global financial market right now, well, really not global because this is just America, but it really has a lot to do with America. But look, Federal Reserve raises interest rates by 0.75% matching June's historic move. So the Federal Reserve inside the United States has now raised interest rates. It just so happens that most crypto investors are living inside of America. So most money that's flowing into crypto is flowing in through America. So you're seeing huge increases now with people throwing their money in. But some people would look at this and say, this is a bad thing. The Fed is now raising interest rates by 0.75%, matching June's raise. And you've seen what happened in June. Everything went down because interest rates were raised. Now, this is not so much of a bad thing. And I'm going to tell you why. But first, you got to think about something. Yeah, the Fed just raised this. So what is this going to do? This is going to make borrowing money more expensive. This is going to make that loan that you, you want to take out way more expensive. Let's say it was only $500 a month to pay that loan off with a 10% interest rate. Well, now it's going to be more like $700 a month for you to pay that loan off. And it's going to be more like a 12.5 interest rate. So that's kind of, and I, I just throw, threw numbers out there. So don't even do the math and be like, no, Marcellus, you're wrong. You're dumb. Nah, I just threw some numbers out there to give you an example. Borrowing money is going to become more expensive. So what is this going to make? What is this going to do? It's going to make people cannot borrow money. And as people do borrow money, it's going to bring money into the government. So let's go over ahead. Let's go ahead and go over a few of these things. So the Federal Reserve raises interest rates by 0.75%. So the reason why this is such a good thing for the crypto market, people are looking at this as the last interest rate hike. So this is supposedly like they're saying, if we don't have massive inflation after we do this, then they're going to stop raising these interest rates. They're actually going to lower them. If we do not have massive inflation, notice with gas prices, gas is starting to go down. Gas was actually all the way up to like $4.30. And now it's down to $3.60 here inside of Florida. So is that, gas is definitely going down, which is definitely very nice. But when you scroll down here, it, it says over here, the Fed will release updated economic projections alongside the next scheduled policy announcement on September 21st. So they're really waiting till September 21st to see whether or not they're going to continue to raise the rates or they're just going to stop. Because look, if we have a lower um, inflation, then what they're going to end up doing is not raising the rates coming inside of September 2021. Or, yeah, no, September 21st. But hopefully we don't have any more inflation and they don't raise the rates. But people are really going off of hopium right now. So that's what they call it when people have so much hope. So people are hoping that this is the last rate hike. So that's really causing people to buy in. And also they mentioned something really important here, which is kind of counterintuitive to what's happening. So they said the Fed's efforts to undo its pandemic era stimulus also involves unwinding some of the assets that it purchased during 2020 and 2021. The key words here is its pandemic era stimulus. We know most of the money circulating in the U.S. right now is from the pandemic era from 2020 to 2021. And we also know right here, they said unwinding some of the assets that it purchased. Unwinding. If you're unwinding something, you're redoing it. You're going backwards. So if you're unwinding, if you're unwinding assets, 
you're selling assets. You're offloading assets. So if the Fed is going to be selling assets, what kind of assets does the Fed have? Well, probably maybe they have some commercial real estate. Maybe they have some stocks. Maybe they have some crypto. I don't know. Maybe they have it invested inside of other companies, you know, like BlackRock, the company that owns almost, well, let's just say the company that owns the world. Let's be honest. BlackRock owns the world. So let's just say they start to offload all this money that's inside of all these different places. And they're going to be rolling off about $95 billion per month starting in September. That means that the prices for everything that they're holding is going to drop significantly. If they're holding a stock and they offload $1 billion out of that stock, that stock just now lost a billion in market cap, meaning its price is going to go down. So yes, you see prices increasing right now, but think about what's going to happen after September 21st when they start selling $95 billion worth of assets every single month. This is what you want to pay attention to. Do not pay attention to what everyone's saying. People are saying, yeah, the recession's over. We're about to have a reversal in the crypto market. All of this other good stuff, which is true. We are having a reversal here. And uh, I just watched another video. Big shout out to uh, the other YouTuber, Graham Stephan. I know everybody knows him. He just now made a video talking about how the recession could be over, which I definitely agree. It's about that. It could be ending by next year. But what I want to say here is you really want to look at this $95 billion per month that they're going to start unwinding. So this is, I don't, I don't know how this is going to affect the market because, you know, there's a lot of money circulating, but $95 billion a month is a lot of money in a total of $9 trillion. As of earlier in the year, the Fed's asset holdings totaled about $9 trillion. And if they're going to be selling $95 billion per month, they might be doing it for a year. I don't know how long, but if they are doing it for a year, you can bet that a whole trillion dollars worth of assets is about to be sold. So you're going to see prices dropping significantly. So you already know the Fed doesn't own no baby doge. Let's be honest. I love baby doge, but I don't think the Fed owns baby doge. But the Fed probably owns some Bitcoin. So if you see Bitcoin selling off, you're going to see other crypto selling off because people react to that type of stuff. So you just got to look at it like that. Now, let's talk about some stuff with Baby Doge. I just wanted to go over why Baby Doge had that huge increase in price. We're going to do some technical analysis because everything we did prior to this was invalidated. So we're going to do a whole you know, new technical analysis on where we're going to be going next. Because remember, with these technical analysis, when fundamental things happen, the technicals get invalidated. So let's talk about some Baby Doge stuff now that we went over what happened with the whole crypto market in the stock market with everything going up. So let's talk about some other stuff here. So Femex. Femex will list Baby Dogecoin. So the volume of Femex they're saying is $1.1 billion per day. Big shout out to Ultra243 for posting this. But yeah, they're saying the volume is $1.1 billion a day. And this is a Turkish exchange. So yeah, Baby Doge is taking over Turkey now. First we took over Brazil. Now we're taking over Turkey. Come on. Baby Doge can't be stopped. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. And as you can see here, they're talking about the Fed interest rate here on the um, live stuff for Twitter. And it's actually trending. So that's exactly why we're going up right now. But let's talk about some other stuff here. So this is the Turkish exchange. So while we're listening for future listings, we'd like to announce two new trading pairs to be listed tomorrow. Waves USDT and Baby Doge USDT. And look, it's on the 27th that they posted it, which is today, meaning that tomorrow we're getting listed to FemX. So this is pretty big. I know they're a small exchange, but they're out in Turkey. So we're going to be getting Turkish followers, Turkish holders now. So that's going to be really nice having another place. First, we got the Brazil, and now we're getting to Turkey. We already got in uh, France because the um, queen of France or something like that, she was wearing the baby doge heels. I'm pretty sure it was France. But yeah, she was wearing those baby doge heels. Shout out to her, stepping on baby doge, stepping with all that money. So hey, this is really good. We're doing a lot of good stuff with baby doge on the daily. So I'm really happy about this. Now, the next thing over here, this is the actual website if you want to go ahead and check it out. But it's all inside Turkish, so you're not going to be able to tell what it's saying. So a uh, big shout out to all the Turkish people out here that are going to get into Baby Doge. You can put it in English, though, and then it'll show you in English. So here it is. And um, I'm not going to read all this because you already know what's going on here. You already know about Baby Doge. But anyways, let's move on to the next thing. So the next thing for Baby Doge is this. Our volume is going up because the Fed raising the interest rates. And now that the Fed has done that... Everything's going up, so our volume is up right now. In the last 24 hours, you can see Baby Doge has burned 17.57 trillion um, coin or 17.57 K. 
dollars inside of uh, baby doge and 12.95 trillion coins have been burned so that's actually pretty good right here we're got we're having um a really good volume right here with baby doge really good trading volume all that good stuff now let's go over the technical analysis let's do a new technical on baby doge since we just now had this whole interest rate hike so right now you're seeing baby doge it did bottom out here around the support that we said we it almost got like all the way down here but it got to the top half of that support area but now what you're seeing with baby doge is it's going up above this resistance so before we go on let me show you exactly why i made this little circle down here for baby doge around 11 30. so if you look over here yeah if you look at my video yesterday you're gonna see i talked about 8z113 so that area right there is where our previous supply and demand started at and that was over here our previous supply and demand of more demand stops right here at 11 30. so that's exactly why i put that circle there because that's where our previous high demand area for baby doge was so i was like you know what let's speculate here if that's where our previous high demand area was maybe we'll have more demand at that area and what happened when we hit that area when we hit that area the second we hit it we start to go up and, you know, really, it was because the Fed raising interest rates, but it couldn't happen at a more perfect time because we were probably already set to have an increase at this area. And the fact that it started to increase as the interest rates were going up, you know, it was just a win-win situation because it just was. This is where we hit the support. And then this is where the interest rate starts to go on. And then, boom, you just start to see a bunch of buying going in. So yeah, everything worked in the baby doge army favor. So you're seeing here a bunch of buying on here on the upside. I like to show this on the os oscillator so you know exactly what it, how it works. You can see all the selling that was happening and now all the buying. Now you are seeing that the buying is kind of starting to slow down. But something I like to talk about inside of baby doge in any crypto really is consolidation. So consolidation is pretty much like this. So wait, let me go ahead and go over to the one minute chart because this is a... I like to call it mini consolidation. I know people are saying that's not an actual term. This is not actual technical analysis. Well, this is what I do. So if you don't like it, get out of here. So anyways, let's move on. But anyways, this is how we're doing it though. Look, this is mini consolidation. This is what I like to call mini consolidation. And what you see here is the same thing with normal consolidation. So literally we're just consolidating through this period here with baby doge. And now you're seeing we're at the top side of this consolidation. And it kind of looks like it's about to break out from here. Notice how we touch the top of the trend line all the time here. And then on the here at the bottom, we're touching the bottom of the trend line. Notice how we're at the top of it. We actually may be breaking out. And ironically, it's right around our support. So maybe Baby Doge pulls right back down here. This is where the bottom, the bottom trend line is. So Baby Doge pulls back down to its support. And then we may actually have another pump from here. So where could this pump bring Baby Doge? So let's go over here and look at our 15M chart again. So where this pump could be in Baby Doge is this next area up here. Let me actually move this auto off. I know there's a lot of different settings that I had to keep taking off while I'm doing these um, analysis. And that's probably why I'm going to start doing um, live technical analysis. I think it would be a lot better for people for me to do a live. So I'm going to start doing lives. But anyways, let me let me get back on track. So look, the next resistance for Baby Doge is 1330. But well, 1335 really. But this is minor, minor, minor resistance. Notice how this little red area. Remember the red bars pretty much show supply and demand or less demand notice how this less demand area is so small it's very small that means it's a minor resistance minor and then you've got the major resistance up here when we actually get past that all the way up here at 1425 pretty much 1430 let's just say 1425 so around here at 1425 we have the major resistance so that's what you gotta wait for with baby doge but we'll probably end up passing the 1330 area with flying colors let's be honest because it's minor resistance so Next thing, uh, the four hour chart. So yeah, let's show the four hour chart here for Baby Doge. You can see what the four hour chart is not much different. We still got our same um, resistance here. So we still have the same minor resistance up here. And then we still have the major one all the way up here at 1425. So nothing new there, but there is something new here. We actually could act, come all the way up here to this next resistance at 1675 if we break past 1425. That's what we'll see. But yeah, let's talk about Bitcoin. So yeah, as you can see over here with the Bitcoin, Bitcoin is now still pumping because you know the Fed is raising the interest rates. So Bitcoin has passed a lot of different areas here, flying numbers. So you can see over here, we're bullish with the 24-hour market control by 60%. And actually, let me show you the 24-hour market control for Baby Doge. I didn't even talk about that. You could probably rewind the video and look at it, but I'm just going to show you it anyway. But yeah, we're, we're bullish in the last 24 hours by about 60% there. That was for the 1M chart. This is for the 15M chart. 
bullish by 60% when you look at it for the 15M chart. And then when you look at it for this chart here, you see 60% bearish when you look at it from the four hour chart. So still for the long term, there's still the possibility of us having another drop in the crypto market. And that's why I was mentioning in September 21st, when they decide whether or not they're going to raise the interest rates again, if they raise it again, we're going to continue to go down. That's why you still see the indicator saying that it's still 60% bearish because when you look at it from the long term, there's still the possibility that we go down. And also when they start to unwind all of their assets, pretty much selling some of their assets, $95 billion per month, that's also going to cause prices of everything, even baby does, to go down. So you want to watch out for that. This could be a bull trap. I don't know. Nobody knows, but we can speculate and we can look at it like that and make educated decisions. But like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. But yeah, let's go over Bitcoin. So as you can see over here with the Bitcoin, Bitcoin is getting rejected here at this red bar. So it just now got rejected. This is our supply and demand of less demand. We have less demand at this area, which pretty much means we have resistance. So now you're seeing Bitcoin getting rejected at this resistance. We'll probably end up going back down here to 22.5K. Not too far down. We're at 22.8K. But we'll probably end up trading between this maybe for a little while, possibly even dropping back down to 21.8K. But right now, it's definitely looking like people are hopeful in the crypto market. So we actually may see some pumps coming in here after that. So you might just see a little bit of a pullback, but that's going to be followed by massive gains. So you can see here the second Bitcoin hit the, the support over here at about 20.7K huge gains right here that's why i show these supply and demands and i talk about them there's high demand in these areas every time we hit the green areas we have high demand every time we hit red areas we have low demand and you can actually see it time and time again red area low demand we go down green area high demand we start to go up same thing over here red area low demand we go down and then you see over here green area we start to you know kind of go up and then we go back down when it goes red so you got to pay attention to these things with uh, the crypto market. So yeah, big shout out to all the Baby Doge army out there for sticking around. But let's talk about something that a lot of people that didn't stick around won't find out about. So look over here at our oscillator. I love to show the oscillators. This is the oscillator for the four hour chart on Bitcoin. So you can see huge selling volume here, huge selling volume here. Notice how this one right here is smaller than this one here. The selling is starting to go down, which is a bullish signal. The next selling wave is probably going to be more like this, smaller, and then you're going to see a huge buying wave coming in. So that's why I'm showing you like, yeah, we could be increasing, but remember, it could be a bull trap, but we should be having another nice increase in the crypto market coming soon, but it could be a bull trap. So you want to be careful, but yeah, anyways, this is pretty much all I got for you all today. And uh, let me know what you think about all of this stuff happening in the crypto market. Let me know what you think about the Fed raising the interest rates and all that good stuff. But yeah, remember, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. Definitely go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you all want me to go over next. If you want to become a member of the channel, definitely go ahead and do that. I'll go over any crypto that the members want me to go over next, as long as it's not some kind of scam coin. And if you want to become a member, oh yeah, I already said that. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, if you don't have a Legend Anna X or an S or any kind of hardware wallet, you definitely want to get one because if it's not your keys, it's not your crypto. And yeah, definitely check that out. Link in the description. And also, this video is brought to you by Marcellus.BeatStars.com. If you need any background music for your YouTube videos or for your music, I got you. And also, I have some links inside the description for the equipment I use, like my mic, my computer, uh, my speakers, my everything. I have all that different equipment there if you want to check it out. So definitely check that out. And as always, I'll be back with another video.